37 trillion. That is the number of cells in your body. In comparison, your body is also a host to 40 trillion microscopic colonists. In other words, you have more non-human cells than actual human cells, which means that roughly a little over 43% of you is not human at all. But it is not alien cells either that inhibit us. Rather, they are microscopic organisms that have inhabited many parts of our body. These microbes include bacteria, archaea and fungi. Your mouth alone contains around 500 to 1000 different types of bacteria, while your belly button is home to 2368 bacterial species. 1458 of them are new to science. Just like a fingerprint, every person has a unique variety of inhabiting microbes. Together, we call them a microbiome. Personal microbiome can be compared to a biological signature since no one, not even identical twins, share it. Interestingly, the microbiome is unique from the moment of birth and it continues to change throughout life. Our little inhabitants go on to form entire ecosystems just inside of us. And a slight change in the structure of this ecosystem can lead to different eating habits, diseases, and moods. A simple change in the diversity of the microbes living in our gut can affect how we think and feel, which is why our gut is often called the second brain. Our interactions with bacteria start before birth. By the time they are born, newborns already inhabit some of the mother's bacteria which they interacted with while still in the womb, and then collect more bacteria from the vaginal tract during birth. Babies continue to take in their mother's microbes through skin-to-skin -skin contact and breastfeeding. Children's microbiome rapidly changes as they continue to grow, which depends on their ever-changing environment and physiology. Even a simple kiss from a long-term partner can affect our microbiome, a French kiss that lasts 10 seconds allows partners to exchange as many as 80 million microbes, which eventually become part of their microbiome. Compared to strangers, long-term partners share similar oral microorganisms. Thus, in a deeply existential question of who are we, we might go ahead and say we are mostly ships that carry bacteria around. But microbes that live in us are far more than tiny parasites. Sometimes our bodies become victims to bacteria that cause diseases like tuberculosis, meningitis, and cholera. Most of the time, however, we are inhabited by peaceful creatures that interact with our bodies in many ways. These microbes that live in our bodies influence our appetite, immune system, emotions, and even mental health. Have you ever felt this confusing urge to eat dessert after a filling meal? Well, it might not be the absence of power of will after all. Apparently, we do not only feed ourselves, but also our gut bacteria, which turned out to be very persuasive. Normally, after we eat a nice meal, our body secretes a satiety hormone that tells our brain to stop. This is precisely the moment microbes intervene. They can control when our body releases this hormone. Therefore, even if we're full but they aren't, we keep eating. Another link between microbes and the brain comes from mental health. Some studies show that a cocktail of probiotics can alter brain activity, while certain types of bacteria can even change how the brain conducts electricity. Mood disorders such as stress, anxiety, depression, and autism have been linked to disruptions in microbial colonies in our gut. Patients who suffer from depression often show abundance of chemicals that lead to inflammation. These same chemicals are produced by gut bacteria when there is a disruption in the microbial ecosystem. Along with diet and environment, our inhabitants can be influenced by our nature. Human genetics also determines which microbes get to colonize our body and which are immediately stopped or made to pass through the ecosystem like a temporary guest. This means that human metabolism and whether we develop diseases like obesity and diabetes later on in life 
can be predicted at birth by looking at our microbiome. Revealing the secrets of this complex relationship we have with microbes can lead us to a better understanding of how our bodies react in terms of eating habits, mental health, and diseases. Soon enough, we might come to a future where every person will have their own microbiome passport that would carry details of the types and numbers of microbes residing in them. But a more fascinating future would be the one where by simply changing our microbiome, we could manipulate the host human from curing diseases all the way to changing personality.